Hello and welcome. No doubt, when looking to invest in a used car, you should always get it through inspection by your reliable mechanic. However, this step still costs money. If you bring him or her a hundred cars, it's a hundred times your money. So you need to be absolutely convinced the car is worth it. In here, you'll find everything you'll need to build up a strong case file around any car. In summary, when inspecting a car, prop the exterior condition, whether it's body, paint, or tire wear. Examine the engine might seem hard, but there's multiple easy clues, whether it's obvious engine quakes, weird noises, smells, or smoke. The interior condition is probably the easiest part there, because it's bad if it's usually mostly worn and dirty. Some clues may also reveal crash and repair cases. We'll explore them clues a little bit later. To wrap up, take it for a test drive. It's the only mean of communication for the car to express herself. And finally, check the mileage. It's the moment you're most familiar with the car. So five steps easier than what they look like and here's how we tackle them. First, exterior condition. It is always good habit to be aware of the most common issues on your car. Here are most common issues related to the exterior condition as well as suspension components. Rod bushings. Do keep in mind that this is the most common issues. Doesn't mean that nothing else can go wrong. Okay, so let's start with paint job. You're looking for inconsistency in the paint job. Panels that seems to be lighter or stronger in color than the rest of the car. Usually you need the sun to be shining bright in order to reflect and for you to kind of see how the light plays on the paint. If a door or any panel has been repainted, you'll be able to notice a contrast with the rest of the car. It's almost impossible to match paint perfectly, not while trying to make money at the same time, especially when you take into consideration how the sun fades out the paint over time. Brand new paint in contrast with old body panels, there will be a difference. Next is body condition. As always, this should be the most obvious part. When you're walking around the car, look for any dings, broken parts, scratches, rust, inconsistent alignment in between the hood, panels, bumpers, and doors. It just feels that something is not original and right on this side. Wheels and tires. First of all, make sure all four tires are the same size, make and model. Then take a penny, insert it in between the tire tread, it will give you a rough estimation. Finally, check the rims for scratches, pothole damage and faded paint. Behind each wheel, you'll find mechanical components. Most of the time, it's not so easy to take a look at. You'll need a very expensive $850 small accurate device. Your cell phone, basically. Use it kind of what like I'm doing now. This tip will give you easy access to components such as front axle, ball joint, lower table, control arms, pushings, and many more mechanical components, which we are never used to inspecting. Even if you're not a mechanical expert, you can still look for anything unusual if anything seems torn, broken, rusted, and if you're not sure, compare both sides. Headlamps and tail lights. Check and see if the headlamps are becoming blurred and yellow. This is common with non-UV treated transparent plastic. With time and sunshine, they slowly degrade. This means Either the car was sitting too long facing the sun, or the car has spent most of its life on the road. This is why sometimes yellow blurred headlamps can give you a rough estimation on the actual mileage. Windows and sunroof. At this stage of the investigation, you simply want to verify that all the windows are closed tight and properly. The sunroof can unalign after a crash, so inspect it as well. Now moving on to the engine. Here are most common issues about engine and component related to the engine. Many engine components may fail for many reasons. 
as well as commonly there is a lag when you're pressing on the accelerator power doesn't come right away apparently usually we start by inspecting oil quality however this car does not come with an oil dipstick since oil can only be checked in when the engine is hot enough we'll check up on oil a little bit later Start the engine up and listen, ideally a cold start is the best way for checking an engine. If it's too rough, you know it's usually packing a big load of mileage. So listen for any weird ticking sounds, odd rattle or knocking noises. Some disturbing grinding noisy knocking sounds which should indicate engine failure tend to go away when the engine is heated up or filled with additive oil meant to suppress troubling sounds. This is the part that I hate the most because most of the time when you get to the car you want to see sometimes for honest reasons the salesman will have your car already preheated and warmed up. There is really not much you can do about it except specifically ask for the car to be cold on arrival. While the engine is running, check for any oil leak under the engine bay, rear differential and if it's a 4x4, also check under the transfer case, usually located underneath the car between the front seats. Sometimes you'll find literally oil leaking on the floor, but most typically you want to make sure that everything is dry and that there is no trace of leaked oil. Let's move on the exhaust. Ask someone to rev up the engine a little bit so you can check the colored gas coming out of the exhaust. Is there any oil as well? There is three main colors that could indicate engine failure. Dark black, blue or white gray. The usual color should not be noticeable in summer and very light gray in winter. Moving on engine bay inspection. After letting the engine heat up, it is the perfect time to inspect the engine bay. So shut the car off, check and see if there is any weird smells, whether it's coolant fluid or burnt kind of smell, look for any steam or smoke all around the engine bay. Since you are in the engine bay, it's the right time to look for rusted engine components. Usually when a car is not driven for a long time, mostly because it has been into an accident waiting to be repaired. Some parts, as well as engine parts, tend to be easily exposed to water and accumulate surface rust. Either way, look around for rusted engine part as well as rusted frame and engine bay panels. Finally, this car doesn't come with a dipstick, so because the engine is heated up, it's the perfect time to check the oil level using the inboard computer. As you can see over here, there's no gap. like over here which should probably tell you there's something wrong with the airbag suspension it seems when starting the car the airbag is pumped up with air so there is a there could be a leak which you would miss if you come to see the car while it's uh, it already have been started and heated up. So we're gonna leave it like this and try to come back a little bit later see if it goes back down. Sure enough, if you leave the car long enough, the uh, airbag suspension leaks again, and this is really something you cannot see if. The car, when you go to see it, is preheated and prepared for you. Moving on interior condition. Here are most common issues related to interior as well as electrical components. Steering angle sensor as well as various interior trim may peel off. Okay, so look for any interior wear mark. Less mileage means more value. When people run out of honesty, they become horrible. They decrease mileage without ever restoring life to the car, which is a major problem. 
and is, in my opinion, why a lot of cars that we expect to be reliable appear unreliable. When you buy a used car showing 20,000 km and you are supposed to replace your transmission oil at 100,000 km, you are not aware the real genuine mileage you bought the car is actually 120,000 km. If it's not too late, you end up replacing your transmission oil when the car really hits 200,000 km thinking it's 100,000 km. And you know how we rate issues occurred based on mileage driven? Well, that doesn't mean anything if we keep manually rolling back the displayed mileage on the dashboard. Needless to say, we need to find clues all around that can justify the mileage. Look for any unusual wear and tear on the steering wheel, seats and switches. Any unusual condition could be caused by excessive use which should indicate a relatively high mileage. We talked earlier about clues indicating a crash and repair case. It's mainly the seat belt mixed with black mechanic kind of dirt. When a car gets into the hands of a cheap money making mechanic, you'll most probably find mechanic dirt all around the interior. Right away you can see there is a lot of what I like to call black mechanic dirt. Granted, it doesn't mean the car was crushed. The car might simply be in for cheap maintenance. A crash and repair case is most usually given away by the seat belts. See, seat belts are made in a specific way so they lock when the car gets into a crash and they have to be replaced, but they are expensive parts to buy directly from the dealer because they usually come as a full kit because of safety measures, which makes it the perfect black market item usually stolen parts. This is where it gets interesting. Parts on the black market aren't handled with all due care and attention. Once they have been removed from stolen cars, they are basically thrown away waiting for customers. Meanwhile, those parts accumulate dirt, rust and all kind of nasty stuff. The weird part is that nobody bothers cleaning them up. That is the best explanation I was able to come up with after witnessing numerous recent cars with seat belts in terrible state. This is the perfect example of dirty seat belts. The rear seat belts are fine. This one is average but it's really the driver's seat seat belt which is the most dirty can you see it look on this side i would say this is average but this side is clearly not usual Now all windows and sunroof. Make sure all windows are working properly, open them up and close them down. Don't forget to check if windshield wipers show any malfunction. You really don't want to find out the hard way in the middle of the highway when it's pouring rain. Now is the time to take it for a test drive. I would suggest to drive it in city roads until it heats up and then take it on the highway. Make sure the radio is turned off and ask the salesman to remain quiet so you can focus on the car. After going through that smart chart thoroughly, you really should begin to have an idea on the actual mileage of the car so check it out at the very end of your investigation. If the shown number makes you uncomfortable, walk away or try and get the best deal as fairly as possible. Also don't forget to check and see if there is any cluster light indicating needed maintenance. I'll thank you for watching and if you find this helpful, please share it with your friends or anyone you know is looking to buy a used car. We really need to reach everyone all around the world. Yes, we do. Let's make sure no one ever gets scammed because they didn't know any better. And I hope you enjoyed. Whether you're looking to buy or to be entertained by nice car footage, I suggest you subscribe and scroll through the channel. There are many things which discusses many cars. Thank you, take care and goodbye.